thank you so much for agreeing to do this, Lee Allen. I appreciate your taking the time. So I have a few questions I'd like to ask you. The first one is what event or beliefs in your youth led you to become an activist? I would say that my depression era grandparents were really significant in shaping my worldview. And I don't know if you call it activism or just being concerned, but you know, they're growing up in the depression era really honed my ability to see the world outside of my own challenges and own suffering to where you can be of, of service to others and knowing how great that benefit can be to, to being able to assist someone to hurdle challenges in life that you know may seem significant to them. But if you have requisite world experience, you can help people hurdle very significant things you know, if you have the right heart and the right consideration. I uh, was able to do some documentary work when I was 13 about growing up in the inner city and the challenges with that. And you know, when you do something that young, you gain an audience and people that know you, not just from the community you come from, but from communities around the globe. And that experience has really given me a unique insight on how to look at challenges on a local level, but also looking at challenges on a global level. What I see right now is that, that I think is significant is I think that we live in a very connected world when we look at technology, but we really don't live in a world that is as connected based around a human story and a human experience. And I think, you know, the less that we are connected on a human level and the more we've used technology to kind of synthesize that connection, the more we see that there are greater breakdowns just with better technology to expose it. The human experience is being shaped in, uh, in, in, in gigabytes. And that's really unique when you take into consideration as, as advanced as our society is, the human connection and as Brian Steven would say proximity are much more significant because if you look at people, they're connected, but they're still isolated. And so it's like, you know, Facebook does not connect you Social media doesn't connect you to the world. It only allows you to see the world, but it doesn't connect you with the world. What continues to motivate you and to be an activist or what guides you and gives you courage? I think it's just obvious. You live in a world where you have people that are disconnected from a human experience, even though we have all of these uh, apparatuses that, that are supposed to supplant the human experience. And so when you, you, know, you live in a world where you have to see people exist with challenges, and you've kind of had an experience that, have, that has given you a diversity of understanding and addressing challenges, it's difficult not to be a solution when, you know, that's what your life experience has prepared you to be. I do a significant amount of writing. I actually, you know, what pays the bills is I train student athletes. Uh, and training student athletes for me is, is key because these are really young people that have opportunities that have not been developed. And they come from situations where people don't allow those opportunities to develop because they don't know what an opportunity looks like and the process of developing skill sets to take advantage of opportunities. And for me, I'm able to train student athletes who really don't know their own ability because nobody has given them a proper assessment. I'll give them a regiment, I train them, I mentor them. Then I have the opportunity to connect them with college programs where they can continue to pursue their athletic career. But it's more so about training them how to create opportunities, develop opportunities, and sustain opportunities and using a primary motivation that can be anything that they want to do. It doesn't have to be sports, but giving them a foundation to create achievement for lifelong achievement. And the thing is, is like it's based on a very, very principled model. Do you give a man a fish and he eats for a day or do you teach him how to fish and he eats for the rest of his life? I've developed a model that I can teach people how to fish and I can teach them how to make the rod. I can teach them how to create the strings. And it's like giving them the infrastructure for lifelong achievement. And once they learn how to achieve, they learn how to overcome. They learn how to develop resilience. They learn how to create setbacks. These are just all really fundamental things that you would assume you would learn in the human experience because they're so intrinsic, but they're things that get lost in communication because a lot of people believe that caring and helping people is about their sophistications and then projecting those sophistications over people they feel that are less sophisticated. I come from the notion that people that are less sophisticated are really the most sophisticated and they just need to have frameworks to be able to continue to hone that ability. What advice do you have for youth activists? I think develop skill sets. So it's one thing to be an activist, but it's totally something different to develop and hone a skill set that you know is transformational and being able to develop someone to take advantage of it based upon their resiliences and their competencies. Developing skill sets and cultivating skill sets that help people create viability 
uh, in a dynamic society that we live in are a lot more critical than just, you know, wanting to be an activist for the sake of being an activist. Having skill sets and teaching legitimate skill sets are important because people have to have skill sets to be encouraged and to be sustained lifelong achievers. And that's what, you know, we want to be as a human species is to continue lifelong achievement. And you can't do that if you don't have skill sets, appreciation for skill sets or the capacity to refine skill sets. And if you can have skill sets, the ability to refine them, the ability to identify them, you can always find something within you that you can put out in the world that can end up being tangible and valuable and can help a society that's always seeking some form of help. I had the opportunity of uh, working with a young man that made it to the NFL, just retired last year, won a Super Bowl ring and was very successful. He did not have a lot of opportunities coming out of high school, but he just had the determination and he ended up making it to the NFL and was able to create a great foundation for himself. I have another young man who I'm training who's now at college that's starting for a division of who's a senior in high school now is being recruited. Uh, and he was down in Dallas this weekend. When I first met this kid, I know his father, I had to really be very intense with him because I wanted him to understand how tough it is to develop skill sets and being really critical about his development. And, you know, he didn't appreciate it at first. Called his mom one day and said, you know, mom, you know, this, you know, he just, this dude's being outrageous. Come to find out my grandmother had been a advocate for his mother. She was an advocate for her because she was the local school council president all the time that we grew up. So by the time I yelled at her son and got back, you know, to dropping him off, the mother was like, I had to think about it. She says, I'm one of your grandmother's kids. So your grandmother was a woman that I admired and respected. So this weekend, she texted me out of the blue and they were in Dallas. Jeff, who I trained that, uh, that played professional football, he's now retired in Dallas. And him and his wife started a cookie business. So I just made sure that they stopped by and they went by, met each other. Jeff met TJ, who I'm mentoring, and they sent me the pictures. That's like it was the greatest thing in the world because TJ got to meet Jeff, who got to achieve what he wanted to achieve, basically coming from the same position. The mother got to see her son in that environment and saw a small business. And it's like it's this, it's this virtuous circle. But it only happens that I'm not giving anything. I'm teaching a skill set under very intense circumstances. And this weekend, he went out and displayed his skill set at this camp. There was a nationally uh, recognized camp. That's who I am. It's like I believe in creating dynamic synergies. And that synergy transpired this weekend. So much so, I was so excited about it. I, you know, I walked like six miles in the rain and it didn't feel like cold rain. It just it was it was like a joy because. This young man's life has been forever changed. The mother's life has been forever changed. The father's life is forever changed. And, you know, to think that my grandmother laid the seeds and all of it for her to be the, the woman that this mother appreciated and for me to come back and help her son, that's what it's all about. For Jeff, his success and his ongoing success and just being able to absorb that synergy it's a beautiful thing. And it just makes you continue to want to create more stories that are organic like that. She said, it's like, I was like, how long is it going to take you to get to the store to meet Jeff? He says, I'm 10 minutes away because he's in Frisco, Texas. She was in Dallas. And it was like, that's the way I want to connect to society. The technology allowed it all to happen, a text message, a picture, you know, and it's like, it was, that's what I, that's what I always want to be able to do. I want to connect people that have skill sets that, have, that are the foundations to a, a dynamic success. I have to ask you about your documentary that you're working on. The Grace Race, yeah, you started just talking about the work that I did when I was very young. And for me, like even looking at your face, I don't know you, but I can appreciate finding out your story. That's the world I live in now. I don't see race anymore. I just see people trying to, trying to find grace and winning a race of life through grace. And that's where I connect with people at. It doesn't matter what race you are, what orientation, if we all understand that we're seeking grace and we're trying to win a race of grace, I think that's the fundamentals of what I want to express. Because I think we live in a world that doesn't have race or issues along that. We just don't understand what grace is. And if we understood that we're all trying to achieve grace and we use our competitive forces to try to achieve grace, I think that dynamic is far more um, useful far more organic and far more sustainable 
for a society as diverse and as complex as the society we exist in, if grace can supplant capitalism, that, that's globalization I think we all can benefit from. It's just at the concept phase and trying to find the right synergy of people to bring something to the table that's so simple. It's not really difficult. It's just, I think what makes it work is having people that are genuine to understanding what is the commodity that is intrinsic to a society that's dismissed. And I think it's grace. I think all of the challenges that we see, whether you're a Republican, you're a Democrat, rich or poor, grace is a commodity that's attainable to anybody that seeks. It. And it's a commodity that can bring you far greater joy than anything that you believe that you want, because grace is something that you have to need. And that's what I've gotten to in my life is that Grace is something that I want to provide to other people because I understand how powerful grace has been in my life. Talk to, you know, somebody that started painting amidst one crisis and now they've mastered this arena. Hopefully that grace that Mr. Shetterly has produced for this artwork is it creates the right synergy that this is can be a springboard to, you know, this grace race piece that I've conceptualized. You know, being a father of a, of a two year old, three year old. I'm glad I have been put into the fraternity because it's, you know, something I give people when I try to let them know that very simple things work. I can say I'm actually an American who tells the truth. So, you know, give me a little bit of credibility. Thank you so much, Lee Allen. I appreciate it.